This video is going to show you how to do different types of correlations in R. I'll also include how you can get R to produce you correlation matrices as well, which is um, quite useful for reporting multiple correlations at once. It saves you having to write lots of different bits of code for separate correlations. As usual, there's a few packages that you'll need installed. The read Excel, which is what we always use to read in the Excel data sets. There's a few others as well. This package, HMISC, HMISC, however you'd say that, um, produces correlation matrices. And there's a couple of packages here. I'm going to give you just a very brief overview on and doing scatter plots, lines of best fit, and so on. And there's sort of two different packages that I'm going to use. One's called Performance Analytics, and another one is called CAR. Largely, this is going to be about producing the actual correlation coefficients and doing some hypothesis testing. Data set which is available below this video, you just need to read this data in using the read Excel command. Um, this is obviously on my computer. You just need to set it up so it can find the directory on your computer when you do this. I'm going to be calling this core data correlation data. So I'm just going to run this. I'm going to do the view command here as well. The view command just will make it appear. Um, there's a tab up here so we can have a quick run through that so I'll explain it all to you. But um, you don't actually have to view it for it to be there. And then we use the attach command. And the attach command basically means that R will be able to find the column titles in our data frame when we start asking for our correlations. So I'm just quickly going to run all of that. And here's the data set this other view command does. And we've got a few different variables. Um, I've stuck it all into one data set, but underscore P are the ones we're going to use for the Pearson's correlation. Underscore S are for Spearman's, and K are going to be for Kendall's Tau. Just stuck them all into one data set, just to make life a little bit easier for you. So this is all about um, pain tolerance and consuming chilies, and how well people believe they can tolerate pain and how that relates to their liking and, and the perceptions of chilies. In the first one here for Pearson's, we burnt them on the back of the hand with a, a laser which we can calibrate very finely and we worked out the amount of pain tolerance these people had. The greater the pain tolerance they had, the higher the number, so the greater, they, the more pain from this laser we were able to endure. So we had a score for this pain tolerance and then we made them eat incredibly hot chilies and then we collected the amount of tears that they cried while eating these ch chilies and milliliters. So we believe that the more tears they cry, the more painful they found eating the chilies, which kind of makes sense. So this is just milliliters of tears that we collected from these people. For the Spearman's one, we got them to rate the tolerance on a 1 to 10 scale. As you can see, it gives you your range quite nicely when you hover over it. And heat rating was how hot they rated these, the chili that they consumed, and that's scored from 0 to 20 in both cases. So in this case, if you have 1, that means you've got low pain tolerance, and heat rating means you higher scores mean you found it hotter. And then we've got a final one, a sort of smaller sample with a sim simpler measure, in which we took pain tolerance from 1 to 5, and heat rating from a 1 to 5 scale as well. And there's different amounts of participants in these data, data sets. We're going to run through Pearson's correlation, Spearman's correlation, and Kendall's tau on running this. So Pearson's is your, your standard parametric correlation. Your Spearman's correlation is a non-parametric one based on ranking data. Kendall's tau is another non-parametric correlation, which views as, which looks at actually like the number of matched ranks there are in the data. And it's actually not that commonly reported. Kendall's tau, but it is a perfectly legitimate correlation to do. It's particularly um, good when you have lots of tied ranks. So I'm going to show how to report that and write that up as well. But more commonly, you're going to be dealing with Pearson's and Spearman's. So let's go back to our R script. So producing correlations in R is actually incredibly simple. We can do it in a few different ways. The most, the most basic thing you can do is you type core. So you want to that just simply asks, you're asking for a correlation. Now, for the first one, what we're going to look at is pain tolerance for Pearson and tears for Pearson. So, and it does your also complete, comma, and tears Pearson. That will produce you a correlation coefficient between the two. So if you just run that line, that's 
the correlation coefficients between the two. So that's a Pearson's correlation of minus 0.31. Of course, that's quite limited. Doesn't give us a p-value or anything like that. You can expand on this command. So you can have core, and then we can have pain tolerance, tears. Then our method equals. So the default method is a Pearson's correlation, but we can have Spearman instead if we want. And if you run that line, it gives us our Spearman's correlation. And we could also do the same for Kendall. Then it gives us our Kendall's correlation as well. So obviously that's pretty limited and actually we're much better off using the core test command. Now, you know, this is basically going to be the same thing, but it's actually going to do a test. It's not just going to give us our, our correlation coefficients, it's going to give us actually some test statistics. So we can just type So if we do that as a command, this now gives us our 95% confidence intervals for our correlation coefficient, and it gives us a p-value for it as well. So we can actually, we've got a lot more information here, and we can actually formally write that up. So we can say there's a significant negative correlation between pain tolerance and tears. Report our R statistic, our degrees of freedom, 58, and our p-value, 0.016, and we can write it up something like this. And that's basically how you do the correlation. Now, this core test here command, and we just do that, it's default, so it's 95% confidence intervals, it's a Pearson's as default, and so on. In fact, if we can you know, edit this a little bit if we want. To show you what the full command actually is, you can have actually method, Is Pearson alternative two sided confidence level 0.95? So if you run that, that is going to give us exactly the same outcome because I've just spelt out what's default. But if you, you could have it one sided, you could have your confidence intervals as 99%, and so on. So it's relatively easy to do it. Now, using this framework, we can, all we need to do if you want to do a Spearman's is we change that to read Spearman's instead of Pearson's. Again, these things are absolutely default. So again, we don't actually need to state them unless we want them to be, say, one-sided with 99% confidence intervals or something. So to show you what the Spearman's looks like, we asked for core test and now instead we're just going to look at the Spearman's ones now pain tolerance correlated with heat rating pain tolerance s heat rating s so we're doing a Spearman's correlation here and we're doing this because our data is ordinal Now everything else we can just leave, we don't have to do anything. Now, this isn't actually gonna work. I'm gonna run this now to show you it not working and then explain why. So we run this and we get this error. It says, cannot compute exact p-values with ties. This just basically means it can't produce you a set the exact p-value when it's got tied ranks. So instead, what we need to do is get it to be used to the non-exact p-value. So it's still gonna give us p equals what's calculated it in a slightly different way. So so what do we need to do? We type exact equals false. And now, I'm just gonna clean that. And now, if you run that, there we go. It gives us our Pearson's correlation. And it gives us a p-value for it as well. It doesn't produce confidence intervals. You have to install other packages if you wanted confidence intervals with Spearman's or indeed candle as well but it um alternative hypothesis is two-sided so we could write this up as well 
we could just say there was a significant negative correlation between pain tolerance and heat rating and report our Spearman's correlation coefficient and our p-value p equals 0 0.001 and then finally if we wanted to do candles again really straightforward tolerance and we just want to look at the candle one here and then we just need to tell us our method this candle just remember lowercase for these it won't understand if you do a capital k here give you an error and again we need to have equals false and create some of our candles and there we go here's our candles and we can again just write this up there's a significant negative correlation between pain tolerance and heat rating and then we pause our tau b and then minus 0.37 and our p value is 0 0.048 and that's how you do those and you can do obviously any number of correlations in that way now that's all really useful but sometimes you want to do loads of correlations at once so you want to create an entire correlation matrix i'm now going to just run through that quickly we're going to use a different data set um because obviously in this data set we've got very different numbers of participants and so on so it's not that suitable for what we want to do in this example so i'm just going to we're going to read in another data set this again is available below this video i'm just going to paste that in there so we don't need to call in a library each time either but this is we're just going to call this one matrix data and it's just going to read in correlations matrix so i'm just going to run that now so here's the data set for that we've got pain tolerance which is just scored on a one to ten scale how tolerant to pain they are 10 means more tolerant so they can cope with more pain heat rating this is when they ate chili, how hot they found it from 0 to 20. Enjoyment, so this was 0 to 20, but as you can see, the people only scored from 0 to 18. 18 and being the most someone would have enjoyed it in this data set, 0 means you hated it. Weekly consumption, this is the number of days you consume chili on, and some people can just never consume chili in an average week, and our maximum score was on five days a week, people are consuming chilies. So if we've got this data set, we just want to correlate all of these things. So how can we do this? This will be able to produce us a nice correlation matrix instead. So this is where we use our package up here. So we just ask for our library. There we go. So we just need to make sure that package is installed. So to do this, what we want to do is produce a correlation matrix from this data set so i'm just going to call this one matrix one okay so what does matrix one consist of there's a correlation matrix you can type as matrix so this is going to create us a matrix of given values and where are we going to take this matrix from well it's coming from matrix data. So this data set, matrix data, we're going to save as a correlation matrix, the correlations between all these variables. And we want to say type, and we'll do a Spearman. So that's going to create a correlation matrix of all the variables in that data set and it's going to be a Spearman and if you want to look at that we just need to say print matrix one it's going to be that so if you run this there we go so this produces us our correlation matrix at the top so these are just the correlations between our variables it tells us number of participants about 40 people and this is the Spearman's correlation all the variables now I'm sure you're familiar with correlation matrices so we always have a one which is diagonal because that's the thing correlating with itself it's got to be a perfect correlation of one and of course it's a mirror image on each side so minus 0.49 here and minus 0.49 there and then we've got a p-value for each of those associations obviously it doesn't compute up values for the ones so we could write this up we could produce a table we could produce a table that looks a bit something like that so i only report half of them i only report them from this side 
because there's no point reporting everything twice. And then I can use our p-values derived here to star statistical significance associations in the table as such. So this is a really neat package for it to produce, the, produce these um, correlation matrices. And again, if you wanted to do a person's correlation between these variables, just the type is person. Just gonna overwrite that, there we go. It's so now, this is, as you see our correlation coefficients are a little bit different now, it's because we've been running a person's correlation on them instead. Can't do candles though. Um, you'd have to get a special package to do a candles correlation matrix instead. But that's how you can produce a nice simple correlation matrix. Of course, sometimes you're you don't want to correlate the entire data set. For example, we may just want to do a correlation matrix of these three variables here, these like the dependent variables, um, just to see what the correlations are between all these three. To do that, you need to create a sort of subset of your data. So let's just call this subset I'm going to call it set1 and what's set1 made up of so we just need to tell R that what we need is these columns heat underscore rating enjoyment make sure you correctly capitalize everything because it's case sensitive and finally So that's just going to tell how that there's a set of variables I'm interested in, and this is what they're called. And then what we need to do then is create a sort of new frame in which we want to analyze. So let's call it my new matrix. And what is my new matrix? Well, it comes from it comes from my matrix data. Then you give square brackets and it's set one taken out of that. So if we run this, nothing will actually happen. But now, now we can ask for our new matrix. So let's have matrix number two. Let's have matrix number two. And that is correlations as dot matrix. And instead of looking at the matrix data, we're going to call it my new matrix. My new matrix. So that's our sub data set that we've created there. So I want to have the correlations between them reported as a matrix. And then we just need to, that will see it. Matrix 2. If we run that, and then that produces us our small correlation matrix. So we've just taken, so this is using my new matrix instead to create a new set of matrix, it's matrix number two, call it anything you like, and there you go. This is just our smaller set of correlations, so we can choose what we are pulling into that matrix in the data set. Final thing I'm gonna do is briefly show you how to produce some graphs. I was brilliant for graphs, there's loads of different ways to do all different fancy graphs. I am just gonna give you some really brief plots that you can do, nothing particularly exciting but you can do plots relatively easy because we can just say plot what do you want to plot i want heat rating against enjoyment for example if you do that that gives you a scatter plot heat rating and enjoyment if you want to label your axes differently xlab equals and um, we'll call this one heat space rating underscore shouldn't appear anywhere underscores on part of the english language and we just call the let's call it enjoyment as it already is but if we do that it won't make any real difference to the graph just remember invert commas everything otherwise it's going to read that data in run and you see no real change apart from there it's got rid of heat rating there if you want to line a best fit a B line, which is a linear model. Heat rating against enjoyment. Do that. Let's add our line of best fit to that as well. 
there's other things that we could do if we have the car package and we could ask for a scatter plot and then we can just again it's just the same as that so this produces a slightly different scatter plot here's my enjoyment run that there we go and it also gives the distribution a little box plot of our two variables which is quite nice again we can expand on that and we can we could change the label to heat rating like we did last time so it's not underscored so we can run that again and there we go we've just changed a little bit of it there and so on so the last one is using the performance analytics and performance analytics we use chart dot correlation and then we want say my new matrix And this gives us the correlation between heat rating and enjoyment, correlation between heat rating and weekly consumption, and enjoyment and weekly consumption, histogram for each of the variables, and a scatter plot for each of the variables as well. It stars the p values less than 0 0.05 as well. So this does sort of all, it's quite a good packets to use if you just want to get a really good overview of what your data looks like and look at your distribution the correlations between items look at the scatter plots and so on in one go so there's all those different options and um, by no means that is that a comprehensive guide to doing graphs but there's just a few different ways you can quickly look at your data as ever the data set and the scripts so neat version of this script and um, will appear below this video as well so you can run through it yourself just make sure you remember that you edit these sections here so you can actually run it on your data yourself as well and i'll also put guides um step-by-step -step information on what each section does as well on that